Hi, and welcome to the 78th episode of Keen Minds. We're covering NBC's The Blacklist. This is season six, episode 15. Um, <laughs> Olivia <laughs> Olson. Olson. Olson, yes. I, I yeah. sat there. I, I had the hardest time remembering all that before we started recording, and apparently the hardest time remembering it after I started recording. I'm Jen, a.k.a. Takata Cycle. And I'm Tessa. And this episode was, um, you know what, after after such a tremendously emotional episode that we had last time, and we had a blast recording with Whimsy, um, this one I was sure it was going to be actually pretty light, and actually it turned out not to be that light. I, I mean, like- I gotta say, kudos to Amir Arison. This was unbelievable oh amir just takes it away with the emotional episodes i had no doubt in my mind this was going to be another heartbreaker i mean of a different sort i guess but no i i had no delusions this was going to be lighthearted in the slightest this was i it was not what i was expecting i i don't know i guess i just for some reason i thought that you know this was more uh, a Rom versus Red, you know, they were, <laughs> a Rom was finally getting in the, this person versus Red. We've had Liz versus Red and Tom versus Red and, you know, everybody has been versus Red except for a Rom. There we go. Now a Rom's been in there. Uh, mm-hmm. It was more, it was more of a leveraging situation than a versus mm-hmm. Red. Like he always planned to give the money back. <laughs> the interest. All right. Now that that sound you're hearing is me patting my own back because I did <laughs> say that that's what, what, uh, what Ray was going to do. So, yep. Um, as uh, paraphrasing Red, sometimes my knowledge of Red astonishes me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had just taken a huge gulp of water when she said that, and it nearly went all over my microphone, my computer everything it was almost very bad Tessa has a, a real talent for picking those moments <laughs> right after I take it yeah for something. saying something and the funny thing is I'm looking at you so it's not that I don't do it on purpose though it's just my timing I don't believe you I think you do it on purpose <laughs> there are being ascribed bad intentions <laughs> let's talk about our intentions I think that that we usually start on the less important episode but I think that we ought to start this one by by the bull. Red and around. Let's go. I'm game. That's yeah. Shake I things mean, up. This was this was just a Ram's trajectory has been outstanding. I mean, who remembers when a Ram first came over and screamed in, in a script in Wujing, um, saying, thank you, Aram. <laughs> you know, he was just a tag, and they said, thank you, Aram, to himself, as they're going over there. Ha- I mean, that has been quite a story. Well, I mean, that's one of the amazing things about about film and television, uh, especially television, I think, just because there's more time for it. Um, the you know, you've got, obviously, you, you can't have a show without the writers. Um, but on top of that, it's a, you've got so many people going at it to to make it happen. You've got the writers, the, the production team, and the actors, and everybody that's, you know, got all these moving pieces to make it happen. And it has to be just absolutely phenomenal to write a script and create a character that you're like... This is a fun dude. You know, I'm sorry that he's not coming back. I had fun with him. And then you end up casting someone like Amir Arison, who just takes it away. And I mean, yes, whoever wrote uh, Wujing. Yeah, it was Wujing that he showed up in. Mm -hmm. Whoever wrote Wujing, I'd have to go back and see who was the writer on that one. Uh, That was the second one in? Third one. Third one, then no, it wasn't the Johns. Um, so I don't remember who was who was the writer on that. But whoever created a ROM may not have even known what gold they had in their pocket. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> a combination of, of the lines were good and then the actor just 
took it away. Exactly. It was supposed to be a bit part. Exactly. And they just kept calling him back and kept calling him back. And he became a fan favorite. And that just has to be absolutely amazing, both for the writers and and the actor, to sit back and watch that happen. And all all the people that it takes to make that happen. It's It's so much fun. And Amir really has, for years now, just you know, he's the gift that keeps on giving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love Amir. <laughs> yeah, it, and this, I mean, the past, yeah, past episode was also very emotional for him. He had all these great scenes. Did you read, um, did you read the bit? I'm trying to remember what, uh, what article it was in. I'm real hit and miss with articles that I read these days, but apparently poor Amir was super, super nervous about oh, taking oh, a swing but, at James because he was afraid yeah. he was going to deck James. <laughs> And so, but apparently James, it wasn't the stunt double. James stood in. I'm not really shocked over that. I think he's, you know, he's, yeah. he's been around long enough, but. Uh, well, actors learn to, 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 to do a hit without really hitting. I mean, well, you do yeah. make contact, but it was, but, but it's not like. Painful. But Amir said that he was worried because he was in, he was so emotional with the scene. Cause I think he just dived straight into the emotion there. I mean, remember him in season three with the, <laughs> the, when he had the gun on the director and everything. I mean, and he had the, the snot coming out of his nose. It was just, I mean, he was just so in the moment there. He just seems yeah. to dive straight in. And, yeah. uh, but he was saying in the article he was worried about about yeah. actually making contact and taking out one of their executive producers and legend James Spader. <laughs> yeah. And it was I mean, but what a scene. I mean, from that moment in, and then the beginning of the episode as he's basically emptying the account. Um, I love the fact that they tied this all the way back. What was so? F- I was gonna okay, that's probably what you were about to say. Sorry. Uh, back to season one when Red was looking for the mole. Yep. That's what I thought of. I was like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> at yeah. least at least he's not on the clock this time. He's much cooler under pressure. <laughs> yeah. So this this was very, very good. And and I just love it. I mean, this is a guy who had to go through therapy because he killed a terrorist who had guns on her friend, on his friend. And they, he's gone through all this. And I love the fact that that is one parallel that we were never aware of. So I love when the blacklist does this. You've been we've been seeing parallels between Red and Wrestler. We've been seeing parallels between Red and Tom, uh, even between Red and Liz. This this is one that we had not seen. Um, because it, it's only after and, and that's always what I say, you can't really Make up your mind when you watch the blacklist about what a scene means, because sometimes you think you're seeing the whole scene and then something else lifts and you see the whole scene. And then there is a lot more than you hadn't seen. So Aram is this little guy who starts, you know, being like scared of just doing, you know, of killing this guy and goes on like, and then in the architect, he's like, he's not going to commit another crime. I'm going to bazooka him to hell. <laughs> I loved that. Yeah. And then he learns to be a, a, a field agent because he, he, he felt that he, in a moment that when he needed to protect Samar, it, he wasn't ready for it, uh, to saving Samar and losing Samar again, um, which is a, a theme too. We have seen that that transformation and to, of, to a person who can now think and 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 go back and use something to get leverage. Yeah, and what's interesting to me is he said he held on to that information from when Dimbe opened the account. So, I mean, what was going on there? Did he just think, "I wonder if I'm ever going to need leverage against Red"? Well. It shows something that when when you think when you think you know someone, I think that that the reason where Ram really survived in there in that world is because he was never as vanilla as he seemed, never as naive as he think, as he seemed. There is always have to be something that says I'm dealing with with 
dangerous people and I'm in a dangerous game, I should know how to protect myself. I should keep some information back. Well, I mean, to be fair, um, Red did think he was a mole very early on and held him at gunpoint <laughs> to, you know, prove that he wasn't. Um, but it was interesting because it kind of reminded me, looking back at Kate, with all the literal bones in the walls, you know, all of her evidence that she had stored away for a rainy day there. And apparently Aram did the exact same thing, just on a smaller scale. He had a little something stored back, you know, whether he intended to use it that way or he was just putting it in a file. We don't know, but he had access to it. And I just I loved that moment of how irritated he was that it took Red as long as it did to come to him about it. Mm -hmm. I was about to have to tell you myself. Mm hmm. And it's funny because as we were talking last week about about that and people saying, um, I know that they were like, oh, he's going to, Reddy's going to kill him. And I always said, no, we're seeing a parallel here. Now we're, ge we're getting a very important part of the story about the, um, the Osterman Umbrella Company with Katrina. And I always thought Red was a rum. Red had to let her go. And, and in this episode, we saw that. I mean, those conversations on the plane were great it was i mean what acting in there oh yeah between... i mean especially for just sitting basically sitting opposite of each other i mean they there wasn't a whole lot of movement there wasn't a whole lot of it was just dialogue and small body language and no they, they were absolutely amazing it's we've said multiple times before that that it takes a lot to to you know keep up with James Spader because I mean the man has has been in has been making you know a, a name for himself for years and we used to talk about how Ryan you know mm -hmm. was on the path to being able to keep up with James I think Amir is too oh I yeah think, I mean he's you have these other actors that can that I mean, obviously, Megan's had the most experience in, you know, the most practice with it for this mm -hmm. show. Um, and so, obviously, she's she's done well with it. But you have people like Amir that, that have not, yes, they've had, you know, some practice with it, but not nearly as much as someone like Megan has. And mm -hmm. he really is, like Ryan, you know, on, on a path to... I mean, he's already a great actor, but of just being at that level. Yeah, yeah. that that whole different level. And yeah. so it, that took me a long way to get there. Sorry about that. <laughs> it, it is, it is, um, and those scenes had such beautiful little things going mm -hmm. on, uh, both in, 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 in a rum and in red. I mean, red, when red was talking about it, you could see that every word that he was getting out, it was, it was just like turning something inside him, well, talking I think, about. I think he was about very, the woman. Yeah, I think he was also being very careful with the way he was phrasing. Here, here's a question: Do you think he was ever taking a rom to Samar? No. Oh, I didn't either. No, so. because uh, all that would be is tracking his plane yeah. to know where he was. I mean, he would have landed and say. And if he had kept insisting, maybe he would have taken some other means of transportation to take him there. But I think he was fully confident that he was not, that he was not taking um, uh, around there. Yeah, I think that he kind of did to Aram what he's done to Liz multiple times of, I am leading you down this path, but you have to get there yourself. Yeah. And he here, had done it to Cooper too. Yeah. He, here are all the the tools that you need to get there, but you have to be the one to take the leap at the end. And that's that's what uh, what he set up with that. And oh my gosh, that scene at the end with Aram talking to the the camera and the clock. Oh my god! It did it remind you of Liz talking to the camera on the clock in uh, Red's apartment in uh, two twenty? <laughs> no, it didn't. But uh, <laughs> I think that's got a little bit different um, different vibe there because I mean hers was more not playful but i mean because she was she was irritated she was frustrated but it wasn't a dangerous sort of situation 
there was a heavier sense of danger with Aram because, I mean, mm-hmm. these are people trying to kill the woman he loves. And I will this, not hesitate on killing him. Yeah, that too. I mean, but I, I think his worry is for Samar. And not only is it that, but they're trying, once again, just like, like Levi did, they're trying to use him to compromise her. Mm-hmm. And it was him accepting that to love her, he has to let her go, which is the toughest lesson. And that that isn't always learned. It's one that Brett's never been able to learn. That you know Not with Liz, but I think he did with Katerina. And, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I mean there, there's a good possibility of that. It's looking more or, and more or like at least it. Katerina didn't give him a choice. <laughs> yeah, that's that, way. that could be the possibility there. The cat cat made him <laughs> forced him into that. Um but, I mean, so did Samar with Aram. And so, but that could be the difference. I mean, you've heard me say again and again that I, th- I think part of this story being told is a generational story. That you have the older spies, which are Red, Katarina, Scotty, um, Howard, and even Cooper to an extent. Um, just a, a generation of spies. And then you have the next generation, which would be Liz and Tom and even Wrestler and... Aram, Samar, you know, that that whole age group in there, mm-hmm. that they're the task force and Tom and all of them. And how you've got this story being told of the next generation doing a little bit better. And I think that that's, you know, if you if that parallel is being drawn between Red and Aram there, and if Red was forced into that decision and didn't didn't ever have that choice to make it himself. Kat just made it for him and and left him with that. And maybe he wasn't strong enough to make that, de- if he had known where she was, that he wouldn't have gone to her. I the, think he did, because he said, don't force her into yeah, making that and, decision. And that oh, she has it. to leave you again. Yeah, and that, you're right. And so most likely he, he pulled a red and did the thing. And so he's trying to help Aram learn from his mistakes so that Aram doesn't repeat Red's own mistakes. And so it's a story about the different generations learning the lessons so that they don't repeat. I mean, in a lot of ways they are repeating, but, you know. I'm going to ask you something because I know that we we, we went there last week and, and I had a very different answer that I have today about that do you think it is possible that Samara really was pregnant I don't know I don't think that was why do you think that she was parallels yeah maybe but I it was such a it was such a stupid lie to 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 um to Mossad I mean that's so easy to verify here P in here yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, I think that in that moment, I, I think that she was thinking about it, that it was weighing on her because she she had had the feelings for so long that she didn't want children. And then she had changed her mind with a ROM. And then when she got this diagnosis, she realized she couldn't. You know, even if she was physically capable of it, she wasn't going to be mentally capable of raising a child, and a rom would basically have to pull all the weight there. Oh. But no, and so I think it was weighing on her mind, all of that, and so when all of a sudden you're failing your polygraph, that's just what came out. And so it's it's possible that, that that's another parallel they're drawing. I mean, I wouldn't... I wouldn't necessarily bet against them on that, but... As of right now, no, I don't think so because that eventually Aram will be like um, Red says. Uh, there is a child you need to adopt. <laughs> like I don't want to adopt a child. No, you do. Oh gosh, it's gonna be like NCIS with Ziva. <gasps> no, I, I know. Follow that, but I mean, it would be like um, I. It just seem. I, I'm not sure that they're gonna do this, but it kind of like after saying no last week. I, it just, I'm not sure, but it just gave me a feel about it that we're going to get another generation and maybe in Aram it would be, at least he would be raising his kid. He would be like, he mm-hmm. adopted this kid and and nobody knows where he came from. Or maybe even he'll know. Oh, no, no, he will know, but nobody yeah. else will. Yeah, maybe. 
little piece of Samar. Oh, yeah. oh, that's heartbreaking. Beautiful, but heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I don't know. It just gave me a feel. Just yeah. gave me a feel that I'm not sure that it goes anywhere. But anyway, um, the, anyway, we did get that 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 little thing there that that apparently Red went to found Katarina and she had to leave him again. Yeah, it certainly sounded that way. Yeah, and and the pain of Red. You know, it's funny because a lot of people were betting that Red was going to kill a ram or um, especially because the promo department put that thing instead of talking to uh, to uh, um, Olive, Olive, um, Olivia Olson, he was uh, made it made it look like he was talking to Samara on the to a ram on the on the laptop. And oh. then he closed it with a gun. Yeah. Oh, no, the promo department, they, I mean, but that's their job is to make it look, you know, to cut it in such a way. You you can't trust the promos. Never trust the promos. (laughs) In fact, always bet that whatever the promo is, you're not going to see that. Yeah, their job is to trick you. They are being paid probably fairly big bucks Mm -hmm. to make sure you think it's the most horrifying possibility there is. Don't trust them. Love them, but don't trust them. No, never trust them. Um, anything else on, on Aram and Red? Oh. Um, I love that he couldn't, he just couldn't help himself but to help the task force. It was precious, but Red knew that was coming. Um, I do have something that's, well, uh, a funny thing. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, um, um, interest. <laughs> the interest that was accruing <laughs> a rom. I owe Mr. Reddington, like, what was it, like $56,000 or something yeah. like that. <laughs> um, so I, I have something to say about Red, and then I have something to say about Liz and a rom. How do we want to? Well, let's go with with Red. Okay. So the interesting thing, and I mean, we, we got the scene with the um, the needle. Uh, at the very opening scene with him in the little little apartment. And the pill, yeah. And, um, no, it wasn't a pill. Well, I, he did have pills there, but he was giving himself a shot. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, and then he took something in the plane and kept, I mean, like, just really acted like he was feeling bad. I mean, I, I don't know if it was the angle or what, but they had him looking really sick and almost puffy looking, mm-hmm. you know, like he's having a reaction. The medication it must be the way that they're doing his makeup right now to kind of puff him up mm-hmm. um, because he, he really did look like he was having a reaction, the medication. And uh, so I don't know. Do you what... think Ren is really sick? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I've, I've wondered about that for a long while. We discussed it last week. We've discussed it before that. Um, but I mean, he's almost gotta be. Otherwise, why is he taking it? Um, not to mention in, in season one, episode one, he said, Samani is dying of Nipah virus, not dying, make him dangerous. Uh, and what he wants more than anything before he dies mm-hmm. in, in case of Zamani was the revenge. But I think in the case of Red, he's going home. Yeah. Yeah. And I think home is Katarina. Yeah. And Liz is his way home. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's, um, I do think he's sick somehow. Um, and it's just, it's interesting because... He had to wait on the pills, and then suddenly, as soon as he had the pills, he also had injections as well, which is just, it's a different. Unless they're not, unless they're, they're, the the injections were the second part that Stark had promised. And and that may be it. It may be a different, you know, a, a just a follow-up medication, you know. Um, it just—it was interesting because most most of Stark medications were injected. That's true. Not pills. That's true. Well, what we saw, what mm-hmm. we saw. Yeah. 
And so that was just something I wanted to note on there um, with Red. Did you have anything else for Red specifically? No, I mean, he had been tortured so much with chemical torture. He, I mean, they said in 415 that they didn't know what lasting effects they were going to have for that poison. Uh, because because Kate was pretty pissed, and I would not put it past her to ask the guy to develop a poison that even if he got a if he survived that episode, it would slowly kill him. Yeah, I mean, but it could be, I mean, heaven knows the man drinks enough to slowly kill his liver, but, <laughs> I mean, it could be something that, just the way she knew him as well as she did, you know, that mm -hmm. she found something that she knew other habits, you know, combined with, would end up killing him, you know? And uh, he also had a lot more alcohol in that that glass, <laughs> and he was he was knocking it back on the plane Wait, ride with a rock. On the plane, <laughs> it may have just been what what props did that time. I don't know, but it was just really funny. It was just I looked at him like that was about four four or five fingers worth of uh. Of Unless he was in. Whiskey, unless it was some medication that he was taking in a glass of no. whiskey, so you wouldn't uh, know. No? Maybe, but ugh, why would you? Why would you dump medication in the whiskey? We're in perfectly good whiskey. Um, um, <laughs> I'm not a whiskey person, so I don't know. Um, and what else do you have? You had something hmm. about. Um, I I don't really have anything else for uh, for Red. Most of Red's situation was with oh oh yes um we we have to talk about red with uh with anna and Ann cooper yeah and so <laughs> i mean <laughs> oh coop you think it by this point he would have just rolled his eyes more than gotten angry over it but <laughs> it's... well i just love the fact that that we're getting those two and and i i am so glad that this season we're we're getting a far more um balance approach because uh aram had had a couple of very big episodes and now we're we're i mean it's obvious now that we're gearing to a very big wrestler arc mm -hmm. you know he's trying to find katarina and you know how it is like leonard cole when you try to find them they find you oh yeah yeah and 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 um, anybody who has had an encounter with her had not farewell by the way i mean not at all saying that this is linked or anything but i was i got such a kick out of it when that became you know the route that they were very obviously taking um a couple of couple of au's back uh i actually had rest check tracking down katarina in um mm -hmm. um breathe again beneath the flames he was tracking down katarina on what's his name's uh order um prescott's order trying to find Katarina. And so when this popped back around, I was like, oh, yay, now I get to see how Cannon will handle it. <laughs> <laughs> and now you got new things for Gif. <gasps> yeah. For edits. Oh, um, nah, I've got, I've got plans for Russ in the next day. You, It's all right. <laughs> Poor guy. I have plans for this him. This <laughs> is, um, the, I, I thought, I thought that that scene with Cooper was very interesting because of the balance of power this time seemed very, you know, over the years, they they have got very confrontational, and they were very friendly when Red was in jail, and Cooper really like fought like crazy to save him. Mm -hmm. um, it was funny, like like Red is like, you're gonna have an honorism. <laughs> Sit down and read, you know, Calvin and Hobbes. I loved uh, that that was the go-to. Like, the cigar I got, they'd shared a yeah. cigar. I just, yeah. Calvin and Hobbes. I mean, has he walked in and, like, found Cooper behind his desk with Calvin and Hobbes before? I need the, to know where that comes from. <laughs> the first time that he was mentioned in the show was um, the postman, Tony said uh, that he had some stamps and they were Calvin and Hobbes. Oh. So he started referring to the two hapless um, thieves that he had in the Airbnb house as Calvin and Hobbes. I think that someone on the writing team must just be a really big fan. It must be a, a mm -hmm. ongoing joke, a little you know. Yeah. I mean, mind. you know, there've got to be so many inside jokes back there that you know. <laughs> yeah. What what can we do to the theorists today? We're all just getting a kick out of this. The theorists are going to go mad with it, though. 
So, what do you make of of uh, I think it's time to face that um, little thing that they said that Liz told wrestler to just well after being all gone home on, on sending him to the death panel to the death chair um I changed my mind. Well, I mean, she's told him that once before. Um, a couple episodes ago, she she they had a very similar conversation. I love the bit in the car. We are not done with this conversation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is not the end of this conversation. Russ is just looking at her like, no. <laughs> um, but I so it was the phrasing that she used mm-hmm. that that wrestler asked her, you know, if her mother was alive, um, how could she just let that go? And and Liz turns it around and says that she made her think that, and there were a lot of um, a lot of pronouns being used. She made her think that, or she she, she grew Liz, up thinking. Yeah, Liz grew up thinking that he, not her father, that he was a traitor. And I, I actually commented on this on Tumblr this morning. We're recording this on Saturday evening, and. You know, that caught me on the first round through. I was like, hang on just a second. Because best best memory serves, the pilot, when Red is talking about in the pilot, he said, you know, your mother died of weakness and shame, and your father was a career criminal. Um, mm-hmm. And so, a career criminal is a very different connotation than traitor. Now, a traitor can be a career criminal, but... Mm-hmm just using those phrases separately gives a very different image of the individual. Um, and because you can you can commit crimes all your life and never be considered a traitor, a traitor to your country. Yeah. That's what Red said on the stand. <clears throat> I can I can done I've done horrible things, violent things, vile yeah. things, but none have been a traitor's thing. Exactly. And so um, there was that. And the statement that I made on Tumblr when we were talking about it, I said, I think I think there's a really good possibility that Liz freaked herself out when, she, when Red nearly died. Now, is it her fault that he was in the, you know, on the table about to get lethal injection. No, I don't think it is personally because he was, you know, dying, you know, supposedly dying for the crimes that he committed. It's, I don't think that was Liz, but she certainly would have put it on her own conscience um, because she's the one that set it up so that he, you know, the cops knew where to find him and set the whole ball rolling. Um, And it was for, you know, so that she could get to the bottom of everything. I don't think she... I think she took what Jennifer said to heart. I don't think she liked what the search for answers was doing to her as a person doing to her own soul and the links that she'd got, she had started going to, to get there. And so, but Liz is also not someone that gives up on a question. If she has a question out there, a half truth that someone's told her, a less than half truth that someone's told her. She doesn't stop until she gets to the bottom. She locked her husband up for 4 months on a boat until he told her everything. She doesn't just go, "Oh, okay. Thanks." and move on with her life. That's not Liz. And so to be able to do that, I think that to, to be able to find a balance between the guilt that she's feeling and therefore be able to let it go, I think she has to convince herself that Katarina is the villain in this story, not Red. And that's where she's going with this. It's She's overcompensating for it in a way to to try to basically convince herself that she is okay with this. I I think that I agree with that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm I'm taking a long time to get around to my points tonight. I don't know what's going on. I think I need coffee, but it's seven o'clock at night. <laughs> uh, I agree with that. There is, the, uh, but I, I, I agree, but I don't think that that's the entirety of it. And this is theories me. Uh, I say, I, I said that um, in, in other platforms, um, don't forget one thing. Point of view. 
what Liz knows is one thing. What wrestler knows that Liz, that what wrestler knows is a different thing. And I think that, that Liz knows very well what she has told wrestler. So I, I, th th that's point one. I mean, she could just be lying to wrestler for what you said. She needs to justify. Well, I, I don't think she's necessarily lying to him as much as she's lying to herself. Yeah. But she's she's saying that in order to justify what she's doing to herself, to wrestler, to yeah. everybody. Well, because when you lie to yourself, it's a different sort of thing than when you lie to someone else. When you lie to someone else, it looks like a, a negative... I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. It it makes it look like you're trying to undermine somebody, but when you lie to yourself, it's more of a self-preservation thing. It's just it's the way it comes across mm. from a viewer's point of view. So I, I think that, that that's my first my first instinct is to say, yes, you're right there. What she's doing is she's lying to herself and she's lying to a wrestler. Um because she needs she she found herself horrified by what she did. Uh, out of two things, you mentioned Jennifer, but also Wrestler, who said, at the end, he's a man who loves you very much. Mm -hmm. And I think Wrest at this point, he's like, all right, you know, Red's out of danger. He's, you know, he's back to doing what he, It's like nothing happened. Now it's time to get back to business and figure this out. And yeah. so, like, I don't think that Rustler wanted the man to die, but he also doesn't want justice to go undone. Well, he, he also needs to know. Yeah. He was chasing someone. He liked to know who the heck was he chasing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean because, you devoted. Well, you, he lost Audrey. He, he, he was chasing the man for, for five years, and he'd been working for another five years with him. And I and think that ten years... And wasn't he actually told to kill him at one point? Wasn't yeah. it? Wasn't wrestler told you know a hit put yeah. at him and wrestler was the gunman? I mean he's the sharpshooter. Yeah. Um. And so I mean that's that's got a way on him if he's you know well were we after him for the right reasons you know what's going on here and it goes back to what I've said time and time again when you know people were arguing. Tom just needs to drop this. Tom just needs to drop this. And then Liz just needs to drop this. Liz just needs to drop this. You know, everybody just needs to drop it, apparently, and let Red do his thing. But the problem is, when you let Red do his thing, Red's going to go on indefinitely. And secrets are dangerous. They Secrets get put people in, in harm's way. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the, uh, the motto of, of this season in the pre. But this, my second point is this following. Liz grew up thinking that her father was a career criminal, but also Liz grew up hearing these things about Raymond Reddington. Yeah, hearing that Raymond Reddington was a traitor, but, that Raymond. But would I mean, she have really? A, would she have really grown up hearing about that? Because I mean, as a kid, do you really know who the number four on the? But she studied him in Quantico. In Quantico, but that's not as a kid. That's not growing up. That's no. you know when you're in school. I, I think that she was lying in in that thing, or or she had in a way. Kind of rephrase that. It is also entirely possible that we are about to find out that everything that we thought that Liz knew is not what Liz knew, because she's a very effective liar. So I, I would caution people to always take a look at what Liz says and does, because she, you know, even though she dropped the wig and the and the and the make and the doll makeup. She's still an inveterate liar who does it extremely well. And the, and the third thing is that I think that, that Liz says something to wrestler there. I mean, Liz knew what Katerina did to Minister D and his lover. Killed the lover, disfigured Minister D. Uh, she knows that she framed a guy that Red even told her that she loved. So I think that, that Liz knows very well that Katerina, A, will never give her any answers that she doesn't want to give, and B, wrestler could be in real danger. 
Yeah, and I mean, not even just, I mean, obviously just what you said with Katarina, but everybody that's gone after this whole scenario, Kate, um, Sam was connected to it and had information about it, Tom, uh, other people that she doesn't know, like, um, oh, what's her name from season one? Um, white hair, died in her... Diana Fowler. Thank you, Fowler. I mean, these people that have died and just dropped like flies all around this situation. If I were Liz, I'd want wrestlers as far away from it as possible. I was joking with someone on, on Tumblr tonight. I said, I've gotten, I said, everyone keeps dying around this. I'm very protective about, around wrestler about, about this point. You know, I just <laughs> do not <Yeah>. touch him. <laughs> and I think that Liz knows that, that however good Remy may, may be for her, he's also deadly. Mm -hmm. And I think that by now she's convinced that however deadly Red is, Katrina is more. I agree with that. Yeah. So I, I think that there is there is a lot of that in just simply uh, her trying to bring wrestler back from that abyss. Um, and I think that that it's not going to succeed. Wrestler is going to be one of the vehicles on how we're going to start seeing more things about Katrina. I have my own things. I think that regardless of whether you don't believe my theory, I think that when Red went to Dom's house and dogged that island box, Dom told Katrina. And Katrina has been that unseen force that we have been kind of seeing. It's like, like a figure in thick fog and is becoming clearer and clearer. Out of the corner of your eye. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it's just, you see, you know it's there, but you can't just see it. You just feel it. Um, and so, you know, I've, I've, I've said this over and over. I think that, that we are going to find out who really beat Denison. We're going to find out who was manipulating this thing. And for all the things that I was so upset I gotta say that after I get a couple more things, I start thinking, well, you know what? I'm just gonna give it a benefit of the doubt. Because I, remember me, I was a to in a total tear about the bones. The $300 prop that they couldn't keep straight. Remember that well, one? So someone made the comment about, you know, what was the thing with the, with the way Liz phrased the bit about red was that a, a writer faux pas and i said you know I, I get very frustrated with the thin writing and everything but i have they are they still remain very good because they have to it's you know just the limited it's what uh an episode's about 40 43 minutes is it 43? I thought it was mm -hmm. actually closer to 46. Um, but yeah, I mean, in, in that maybe mm -hmm. um, 43, 46. Let's put in 45 and be happy. Okay. All right. L yeah, let's just call it 45. Um, so the, the general acceptance in most cases is a page of script for 60 seconds. And so you get one page for every 60 seconds that, you know, you're going to be filming. And... I mean, so that means that the every word has to count. I mean, yeah. you are you are slaving over every word and what does it mean? Does is it need to be there? Can you use a different one? Will it change the meaning of what's happening if you use a different one? Is it going to change the tone? I mean, so <clears throat> when all of that is going into it. In that final draft that gets delivered, then um, the <clears throat> I I would have a very very tough time to think it was a writer faux pas. Now there are things such as you know we forgot that Samar speaks Spanish. <laughs> that was a straight up. <laughs> um, well, maybe not because she was forgetting things. 
So, uh, but but that's that's my point is that if you start looking at it, things that are so easy as the audience to say, oh well, the writers just weren't paying any attention. Yeah. That typically, that's not going to be the case. They're paying no. a lot. Things can be missed. Things are missed. They yeah, admitted it, it's to it's not perfect. It's not a movie where you can go back and edit and refilm the scenes. And I mean, you're in a tight schedule. They mess things huh? up in movies all the yeah. time. I mean, yeah. but overall, they're not, you know, it's, you still got to have a little patience with it. And usually the mm-hmm. patience will pay off. Yeah. For example, in, in that example that I was giving, the, su- the suitcase with the bones, it was driving me crazy because the bones were different. And then I started looking at the bones and said, wait a minute. Once I started questioning who beat Denison, I said, wait a minute. Why would Benison just stay there and not try to break free? This doesn't make any sense. And then I started questioning, what if Katerina was in that apartment? And then once you start looking at Maybe Katerina has been there, and we have just not seen her, but we have felt her presence. And then the bones being different kind of takes a whole perspective. Do you think... Because... Sorry, keep going, and I've got a question after. I think that she changed the bones. I think that she got Pete. She got Nick to help. She was the one who, who found Pete... And gave Nick the intro, like you're gonna say this is your 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 pal from medical school, and Katerina got the bones without a single shot fired, and then she changed the bones, and I think that that DNA that was introduced was by her, but she just didn't have the information that that what would Garvey have introduced in the database. So I don't think that her intention was what happened. I think her intentions were different. And then that would explain why the bones looked like totally different bones, because they were totally different bones. Mm -hmm. And and, and so until we are, until it's over and we really understand what's going on, I would say I've learned my lesson. I'm going to shut up. About the things. I was in a tear about the 1990s. I both read lies to Liz. I don't know that. Well, I mean, you and I have both done that multiple times since we started the podcast in, what, season three? Where we've just gone on tears about things and gone, oh, look, that's how it makes sense. I'm going to, and then we'll be good for a while. And then we'll Mm -hmm. find our next thing. It's it's our jam. Mm -hmm. It's what we do. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. what was interesting, and I, I think that you've already kind of answered my question. But something that's bothered me for a long while is Garvey. I've always felt like Garvey felt like he was just kind of hanging out there and that he probably had someone backing him that we never saw. Do you think that it's possible that that Katerina had something to do with Garvey and that Katerina may have even set up Tom's death for some reason? Yes, because I... And I have found nothing. In fact, the little things that I I have seen all point towards Katerina hiding in plain sight as Carla Reddington. And so I think that when when she went into hiding and she was assigned to Garvey, which in that time was you know this little newly minted U.S. Marshal, and I think that she went full seductress on him. And, I mean, we have seen him as a penchant for extramarital affairs, and I think Katerina just control him. I think Katerina is the one behind the Nash syndicate, and I think that as soon as she knew that Kate has gone on a tear, dug those bones, and Red was on the defensive and penniless. Uh, Katerina went into a full, let's fake my death one more time, and now I'm in the wind. And if you think about it, why does Red go to Collar? He goes to Collar looking for Collar. Why? It's... It makes no sense that it is to prevent, to take the list from list because with from not telling her, he's never going to find that. 
so why? Well, it is I, because he's looking for someone. I think someone else was looking for the list. I don't think he was trying to keep it from Liz necessarily, but someone else was looking for it. Um, you think? So, I think that he was, so you, he was you, looking for Katerina. You got to go uh, on your uh, Carlarina bit, and so I get to go on my Tom's Alive bit here. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Um, <laughs> we we got to have our, our crazy rounds. Our little okay. things. Yeah. You got to go crazy. <laughs> it's, you know, it keeps me sane. Ish. Um, <laughs> so here's the thought. And here's, as I'm busy working on the early rounds of my next big AU that I have in the, the works, then I'll be starting to write on soon. Um, I've been approaching a situation that, I mean, I, I've already approached in a way in, um, in, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, um, breathe again beneath the flames, which was the last big AU that I did. Um, it was Howard that, that faked Tom's death, saved his life. And, uh, and, um, Use the uh, the Whitehall protocols to mm -hmm. to save his life, and but in that story he called the the way I looped Katarina into is that he called her for a favor for the body double, and so I've been thinking a lot on because I'm again having to deal with body doubles and you know how would this happen quickly you know what would be the best route for this you know for this and that for the person that saves mm -hmm. him in this one, and. As we're talking about, you know, is it possible that Katarina had a link to Garvey? Is it possible that... Uh, and I've said for a while that one of the few things that I think would keep Tom away from Liz would be if someone was holding him hostage. And I've had multiple ideas of who that someone could be. I don't think it would be Red, because I, I don't think Red is... Angry as I've been at Red, I don't think Red would would intentionally cause Liz that much pain. Um, of her husband being alive and more or less well. You know, like, if he were in a coma somewhere or, you know, didn't know her or something. Like, I could see that. But, like, if he were alive and able to come home and Red was just keeping... I don't think he'd do that to her. Um, but Katarina might. And so that yeah. would, um, I've always thought, because you had a redemption with the body doubles, and it was a Russian, uh, a Russian group that was doing it from the KGB, old KGB, and you know me, I've long since thought that Katerina and uh, Scotty knew each other, mm -hmm. somehow, some way back in the day, and... So I'm sitting here and my brain's coming up with all these thoughts of if Katarina had, you know, needed to take Tom off the board for a while um, or what have you, she could have sent Garvey in. He might have gotten a little excitable with his knife, as he does. Um, I hated that man so much. The actor was fantastic, but I hated him. Oh, well, oh, oh, oh. you think that Katarina would have sent Garvey Maybe. in order to get him out of the equation. Yeah, and then faked his death that way. Um, uh, um no, I, I don't think that that would is what she had done because Garvey was looking for the truth. That's true. And the fact that Garvey was looking for the truth tell me that Garvey knew a truth, but not the whole mm -hmm. truth. Everybody thinking that the truth he's looking for is who Red is, really, but I don't think that's it. It's because once once Frank Highland came back and gave all that story, and, and for that, you, I mean, I got to go into Carlerina, because the, the thing with the blacklist is you're getting these two stories. You know, there is one arm of the story that is that is uh, Carla and Jennifer and this whole thing and Garvey. And on the other hand, you get Katerina and Dom and all that. And the two the two seem to like kind of come together and then they go far apart. And it doesn't make any sense. It's only when you go and make them into one story that the whole parallels and and symbols start to to get in there so if, if you look for it from the from the carlarina perspective um 
Garvey didn't know he wanted answers. And he wanted answers from Red, and he was willing to wait a long time for answers. So I think that what Garvey had realized was that he had been used royally, and he wanted the answers. And he was concerned that Jennifer had been used and was lied at, too. Mm-hmm. And I think that that, that I, I would see Katerina being the one faking Tom's death, especially if Tom found something he shouldn't. Yeah, and that that was going to be my follow up was regardless on if she had anything to do with uh, with Garvey, that she was watching the whole thing and that she she was ready to take it regardless on if she had something to do with Garvey going in or not, that she was ready to take him out of the equation. So that would make it so that she had the the access to body doubles that she would have had the time to have done some planning potentially. Um, because that's, that's always been my hang up of how fast would you be able to do that? Because you have redemption body doubles in which there was surgery involved. You have, um, um, John Noble's dude, uh, from, yeah, from he Blacklist. was just making face masks. Uh, yeah. But that was taking weeks or months to do. I mean, and so, and so I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, there's got to be something in there. But if Katarina was watching all this play out and she's going, great, my daughter married a man from St. Regis. Oh, look, he just won't stop. <laughs> you know, can yeah. someone or, please shut or him or up? <laughs> there is another scenario here that could that could play out that Tom is not being held against his will, that Tom by stepping into all this would have triggered a umbrella company hit on him hmm. and he left to keep Liv safe. That would be interesting. I mean Because but- remember that he was used he was working for the CIA as well. He went to look for Leland Bray. He went to look for Leland Bray as an operative but to that was through back. that was through Saint Regis. He was You don't know that. Yes, that no, was through Saint that. Regis. No. That's not never yeah, been we're, said. We are never gonna agree on him being a an operative for the or the an agent for the no operatives, right? For the CIA. We are never there, going to agree on a, that. There was a screen that said CIA with his stats. Um he was maybe he was in CIA as in a CIA operative, but or when the CIA he, had their eye on him. <laughs> I mean, he the they sent him with a CIA agent on a on a. I know, a, but I Saint Regis Saint Regis. I always got the impression that they lent out their people, and uh, you and I've talked about multiple times that Bud must have had a military background, must have had connections. Throughout mm-hmm. the government, throughout the military, throughout various, you know, of the alphabet suit organizations. And so for him to lend his operative out to the CIA for a pretty penny, not at all shocked over that. Now, to allow his operative to leave for a point of time and work directly for the CIA? No, I don't think he would have done that. But he was working that job while he was with Liz. So I don't think that 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 would have been something that that would have been done but i mean w- we have no information one or the other i i can i can point to the screen but that's not a convincing thing for you um that's your head cannon i have my head cannon <laughs> but at either point he doesn't need to be anything in order to get the umbrella company to terminate him if he knows too much information he shouldn't know because we are being told so far that it was the KGB that put the hit on Katerina. But Katerina as a pure KGB agent makes no sense whatsoever. It doesn't matter how you add it up. It doesn't make any sense. From the marriage to Constantine to the fact that Constantine doesn't speak with a Russian agent, neither does she or Dom. Um it, it just doesn't add up. So to me, there is a lot more in this situation that we haven't seen. And I could see that happening. That, yeah, that would be interesting. That would be very interesting. Um, let, let's circle back around to the actual show as it is right oh, now. Actual show, I, yes. I'm sorry. I got, I got off on Tom. I, you know, this is keen minds. We, mm-hmm. we did start this to have a pro Tom 
arena to play in. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but still, also kind of linking to Tom, I had something I wanted to make a comment about uh, Liz and Aram. Um, her offering to take him out to drinks um, and let him, you know, get, give him a shoulder to cry on. We saw in last week's episode, we saw Wrestler supporting him in the only way he knew how, sit, taking a seat next to him and in silence, putting a hand on his shoulder. And then, I mean, Russ lost Audrey. He'd been there. Then you had this week, you had Liz, who's lost Tom, offering a hand, you know, the support, this family, these people who have lost their significant others um, and trying to be there for Rom. It was just, it was very sweet and heartbreaking and mm-hmm. beautiful. And, uh, it and was, in the letter that Aram wrote to Liz, he said that, you know, she was like his sister. I was, it was very sweet. And so I was, I mean, he's, he's always been very fond of Liz. And so I, I was a little worried that Liz wouldn't do well with that, that she wouldn't I mean, she, she's had her times when she's just kind of blown past it because she doesn't know how to handle it emotionally. And so I was glad to see her reaching out to him and trying to to be there for him. Yeah. I mean, this episode was was really well done. I mean, um, and I, I think that this is a newbie writer. I don't know. Who was it? I didn't look. Um... Somebody I haven't seen before. Might be. I don't know. I, I haven't looked yet. Um, I'll have to go back and look. But um, well made, well balanced. We had mm-hmm. great scenes. Um, and I tell you, they are, I am absolutely certain they chose a redhead with green eyes uh, to be the big bad. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, she just has so many... We've talked about this. Yeah, Yeah. just characteristics, uh, different facial twitches. I mean, expressions, just body language, the whole shebang that reminds us so much of Lottie, who is about to come back around. Mm -hmm. Uh, The other thing I wanted to say is I found the the blacklist are very interesting. I love the concepts they come with. I did, too. I really liked her. And so... and. I kind of got the image since they lost her. There's a possibility she'll come kind of like, uh, mm-hmm. like, um, um, God, my brain is just the not Corsican. Fun. No season two. Um, mm. Vanessa Cruz. Thank you. Wow. Yes. Of all people, I should remember Vanessa Cruz, um, of Vanessa Cruz, you know, always that hope that they'll come back around. They, I think they keep certain, you know, favorites open mm-hmm. to let them come back. I it's would love nice. to see Gina back. Oh, I always want to see Gina back. I am always ready for Gina to come back. <laughs> like I, that would be really interesting to see how she and Liz would handle each other without Tom. Mm-hmm. It'd be very fascinating to watch that dynamic. Yeah, I would. I would love that. Um, I, I found that interesting that they chose an actor, an actress that is British. Yeah, because I mean that's th- that's obviously. I mean, we have quite a few Brits here, but it's still a quality that stands out. And so, like, if someone were to ever turn her in. That's, you know, she's not even faking an American accent. It's, you know, that that's something to go off of to limit mm-hmm. people down. But it's, it's also we've been having we had a, a stronger British theme going on in season three. And I had a little bit in season four. Um, and this time we've had the MI6 agent in the previous season was M, uh, was also British. We, they've been, we've been getting this little, like, sprinklings of Brit all over. I, I find them interesting. I don't know where they're going with it. Not like, like symbols and themes are, it's like a language. I mean, you can identify, you first have to identify words words or things, and then you, you don't really know what they mean. It's like 
you know, if you don't know the language, you may identify a word as being a word. You just don't know what it means. So it takes a while. Without going to a dictionary, it takes a while until you understand what the word means. Eventually, you will get it. Um, I think that that is what happens in, in the blacklist. Um, I noticed something interesting Aram stop wearing plaid. Hmm. He took this tie off and he wasn't wearing plaid at the end of the episode. So oh. it that probably kills the theory that you had with that then uh, not not plaid overall, but just you know him that knowing. Samar had had I mean that Aram had had something. Yeah, I mean, it was very strange because you have been wearing plaid. And notice who was wearing plaid in this episode, did you? I did not. Who was it? Wrestler. Wrestler was. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't notice that. He's been wearing plaid for a while, too. So I think that there is there is something going on at the, at the post office, and I don't know what it is, but I think that wrestler, we're going to get a very good arc with wrestler. He's going to go off to Katerina, and he's going to go in, a, in an unemotional way, which is something that neither Liz nor Tom could do. Well, I mean, that's a uh, yes. <laughs> Just yes. Poor babies. Um, very emotional over the whole thing. Um, but I mean that that's exactly what when Liz brought you know the dead man in the stolen van you know mm-hmm. to wrestler's doorstep. What when she says, "Well, how are we going to deal with this?" He says, "You know how how are we going to track this guy down?" The same way that we handle everything by finding evidence. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to go at it with that perfect cop, you know, sort of mentality yeah. that he has going on. And it's going to hopefully serve him well. And I swear, if they kill Rustler too, I'm going to have some major loud complaints on my yeah. end. <laughs> well, I, I don't think that, that they will, not this season anyway. I don't think they um, can lose anybody else. I mean, they're down to a skeleton crew as, here. As they... As they go into season seven, especially if they know season seven is going to be their last season, I would not be surprised if the body count start rising. I, mm. I mean, I'm I'm actually concerned about Cooper, but I think Cooper will survive. Yeah, I would be more concerned about Cooper than I would be Russ at this point. I mean, Cooper did such a beautiful, I'm so happy that we're working together, Face, to to (laughs) Juana. Oh my gosh, that was so fake. (laughs) It was just like, "Uh uh-huh. I'm such a good guy, am I? Yeah. Look at us Like, I'm going to just nail that coffin. I'm already planning what time I'm going to wear for your funeral. It's going to be plaid. <laughs> yeah, I noticed also that as Red was talking this uh, to Liz, he was uh, right against his chair with a plaid blanket on his back. Uh-huh. So even if he wasn't wearing plaid this time, this plaid is still there. Oh, goodness. So much plaid. Yeah, I tell you. Um, I, 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 it may be wrong, but I, I have another theory with, with, uh, colors, which is, um, there is something about oxblood and it's interesting as Samar was the one who kind of nailed it, like red likes oxblood and burgundies and this burgundy has been a color not worn by many characters. Samar had worn it when he, she first came on board Liz has worn it a few times. Scotty has worn it. Agnes has worn it. Um, and Cooper and Ressa were wearing burgundy ties during the time that Red was in jail. So it, it seems like there is something about Red and burgundies. And I didn't know because Anna went, ended up being um, wearing it too, this last one. So I don't know if the writers are finally decided to start messing up with me. I think my time has to come at some point. Um, I mean, they mess up with everybody. I, I'm not under any uh, illusions that if they, if I come in the Raider, they will, they will eventually mess up with me. <laughs> oh, I, I doubt I'm a big enough fish for them to bother with. <laughs> Guys, just don't, don't. String me along with Tom. That's all I ask. If you guys ever hear anything about me, please don't string me along with Tom. Mm. I'll do that all on my own. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah, it's just right on their way over there. No effort is needed on the writer's end. Don't don't waste your time with me. I'll manage it all on my own. <laughs> it's my good. 
So that's all I have on the episode. It was strong, and we did not learn. We learned the, the name of the blacklisters as, that comes two episodes, not the next one. The next one, I think, is Lady Lock. Yeah. But we already know that they're looking at the third estate. Mm-hmm. And so that's going to be episode 17? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we are right on the 19. I am so waiting for um, that. I think 18, I believe 18 is Sam from over uh, over on Tumblr. Um, but we don't have right. anything, right? We don't have even a title for I it. I don't know. I haven't looked. Um, uh, but I, nope. We know it's number 92, though. It's coming up, it's though. Number, it's yeah. coming up. And so I'm super excited for that one. I mean, I don't know anything about it except for the fact that she wrote it and that alone makes me very excited for it. <laughs> She's really It'd be nice. lovely if she would want to come on the show um, <laughs> to be interviewed for a fun minute after the thing. But I doubt it. They just make them so difficult until the, the, the filming is done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I know that, you know, it's it's hard, um, you know, because people as fans, we ask questions that they're not allowed to answer. <laughs> so <laughs> it's um, but, you know, hey. I'm very excited to see that one and see where the rest of the season goes. Um, but that's that's all I've got for the episode. Um, that's all I got, too. Okay. Well, then you can catch us on uh, Facebook, on Tumblr, and Twitter. And you can listen to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Until next week. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.